Hello again, guys. It's me, Dookie Hoyzer, and I am here at the bottom of this little tower thing. And you may have heard a clanking noise at the end of the last guide. That noise was your first blacksmith, so we'll go down here and pay him a visit. Well, if you're in what, what you'll typically be doing at a blacksmith is reinforcing your weapons and your armor. So here I'm going to make my Uchi Katana better. And if you see I upgraded it, it increased the damage by 10% of whatever the damage was each time I upgraded it. So it went from 90 damage, then I upgraded it twice, all the way to 108. And the same basic principle applies to armor as well. It increases by about 10%. So, that can be very useful. Uh, you'll find Titanite shards, uh, chunks, slabs, all that various stuff, and that's all used for upgrading your weapons and your armor. You can also buy them uh, at various other blacksmiths or merchants that you'll find later in the game. So let's clear these guys again. Clearly they were not informed that my weapon was made stronger. Because they are not going down too much faster. But that, that 18 damage will add up more during boss fights and things like that than against your basic everyday bad dudes. So here's a mini boss. I guess you could call him that. He's not very difficult. He doesn't really even hurt that much. He's just large and intimidating. If you can survive more than uh, two attacks in a row from a dude, he's usually just a mini boss. There's actually another mini boss up here on this balcony behind me. We'll have to deal with in a second. So we got another Titanite shard for upgrading weapons and whatnot. Now it's really important right here. There's a Firekeeper Soul, and I'm just going to show you what to do with those right now. This is a shortcut to Firelink Shrine where you were at the start, so... There we go. This unlocks the shortcut between here and Firelink Shrine, should you ever need to get back up here. And you will eventually, so... Unlocking all these shortcuts lets you get around the map faster. And in the future, when you need to return to certain areas, let you do that more quickly as well. So a Firekeeper Soul can be used to give you a quick 5 humanity, but that's generally not what you want to do with it. What you want to do with it is go to a Firekeeper. And a Firekeeper will take the soul in exchange for reinforcing your Estus Flask. When you reinforce your Estus Flask, Right now I'm an Estus Flask, just a basic Estus Flask. When I reinforce it, it'll say Estus Flask plus one. And Estus Flask plus one heals me for more than a regular Estus Flask, and it'll get a little bit better each time I reinforce it and find more Firekeeper Souls. You can also kill a Firekeeper to get a Firekeeper Soul, but that's generally not recommended because if you do that, the bonfire in the area will uh, go out and you'll need to use the soul to reignite it so you won't even be able to use the soul for the Estus Flask. So we're going up here. And it takes a little while. It's one big open map though, which is one of the nicer things about Dark Souls. You'll never get an actual loading screen. You'll just have to stand in an elevator for a little while. So we're going to go up here, another one of these guys. As you can see, they, they can take quite a few hits, they're wearing pretty heavy armor, and they have shields, which block almost all physical damage, if not all physical damage. Alright, this little mage guy, he's a mini-boss. 
And what happens is all these little dudes just got a shit ton stronger. So I have to be really careful here, or I can take a lot of damage very quickly. You see that little blue aura around them? It's making them stronger. If you see that, you need to be careful because guys that will normally not do much damage, like these little dudes, do quite a bit of damage, as you can just see. So now I'll have to drink. And as you can see, instead of just going up a little bit, my health went up all the way once I reinforced my Estus Flask. It looks like I got a humanity during that fight, so that was pretty beneficial. So I'll just show you what I did real quick to clear out the area so that I don't didn't die again. What I did was I took all these guys, pulled them out here, all the way out here, killed the guys that were out here real quick, and then killed all three of them. So that means I don't have to worry about them trying to kill me if I get knocked down uh, a floor when fighting the guy that's up here. So here comes all his goons again in a sec. And he's gonna make them all stronger. fireballs to cast, so gotta be careful here. Luckily I rested at the Firelink Shrine, so that starts Kindle already, so I started 10 Estus Flasks just for starting off there, instead of up at the other bonfire. So, remember that uh, falling attack? We're going to try it again. So, you can do a falling attack even when you're not, you know, in a boss fight. It doesn't always benefit you to try to do it when you're not in a boss fight, but that's how it works. You can do it sometimes, and it can be very beneficial occasionally. So we're just going to go up here, and climb this ladder. and then climb the next ladder and then we're going to attempt the next boss fight so I'm up at the boss fight again and I couldn't remember exactly how hard the boss fight was uh, turns out it's hard as shit so I remembered something uh, you can use a humanity to reverse your hollowing and summon Solaire to help you out during the fight so he has a bunch of really powerful miracles, and he'll use them against the uh, gargoyles to kick their ass, hopefully. So we're going to traverse the white light. And so there's coming too. You'll hear, hear these uh, golden summoned knights, sometimes affectionately referred to as uh, sun bros by people. The sun bros are pretty cool. I'm a fan. It makes a lot of these really impossible fights a lot easier. Makes it so it's no longer uh, two on one. And you can kind of run around and kite them while he finishes all them off. All things that are very useful for you. Somebody rung the bell. When you hear that, that means that another player's managed to get to the bell. Kind of cool things like that that really turned me on to this game. So, we're gonna try to be killing this guy.
as you can see, it's much easier with someone else there to help you. So, I'll probably include the original fight so that you guys can see how how much harder it is without him to, there to help you out. And once we go up here and ring the bell, we'll have rung the first bell, and that's what you're supposed to do. Your goal is to ring the two bells so that you can open the doors to Anorlando. Anorlando is the city that's kind of fallen into darkness, etc., etc. You go there, you get the Lord Vessel, you fill it up with the souls of the bosses of the game, and then you become the next king of whatever the hell. I'm not really quite sure on the exact details. If you want to know more about the lore, though, I highly recommend uh, a guy's channel, uh, Epic Name Bro. He's 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 very good at the game one, but he's also quite amazing at uh, at knowing his lore. And now that I've told you that, you probably will never watch this again. But that's okay. Whatever. Shout out to a very cool gamer. Um. That's what you do, guys. Uh, hopefully use Solaire to help you in the boss fight, and enjoy your walkthrough of Dark Souls.